We're in this beautiful village, and in Mexico, at the heart of these beautiful villages are their plazas. I always wind up, as most people do, coming to the plazas. That's where a lot of the color is, that's where the vibrancy is, that's where the flowers are, and we have these beautiful focal points of these churches. I'm gonna to come to the center of the plaza, I'm gonna line up my focal point of what's gonna be obviously the church in this scenario, and let's just see what we get. Then we're gonna work the scene a little bit and see what else we can come up with. So I'm gonna switch over to video mode here. I'm gonna tap on 0.5, that's my ultra wide angle. And now I'm getting a lot more stuff to work with. I'm getting a lot more elements to work with. I have this beautiful gardening and landscaping in the foreground that I can include in my shot. So here I have a little bit of motion with these birds now. That's actually kind of cool. But if I don't have the motion that I'm looking for in terms of subject matter, I can be the motion. Now with the newer phones, the stabilization is so good, we can get away with just walking and it's gonna stabilize it both optically as well as digitally. It just gives us much smoother motion than we would anticipate. If we're introducing the concept of time and motion, we need to put something in the frame over the course of that motion that's gonna be relatively interesting. That's what we have to do, so that's what we're gonna do now. I'm just gonna move around a little bit and try and find a composition that has a little bit more visual interest. And I think I actually kind of found it here already. Let me show you what this looks like. I have these beautiful green leaves that are taking up the foreground a little bit, at least on the top part of the composition. So if I have these leaves blowing in the wind, you know that there's motion in a very subtle way. So what I'm gonna try and do is play around with now my foreground, which is this tree and all these leaves, and then keep that background. What I wanna make sure happens is I don't cut off the very top of this church. That's gonna be very important. So here's what I'm gonna try and do. I'm gonna frame up the shot. I'm gonna still stay at my 0.5. That's what's bringing in all this foreground. I'm gonna hit the record button. And I'm still gonna move forward a little bit. I might try that. Now when I move backward, I might tilt up a little bit. I don't have to keep my camera straight. I can tilt up just to capture more of this beautiful sky. We actually do have some clouds coming in on the top left. Now I don't have to keep recording. It actually might do me a little bit of a favor if I stop and start a couple of times. It just makes it easier for me to determine, all right, this is the clip that I like the most. I don't have to kind of scrub through a minute or two of footage to find those five to 10 seconds. Just makes it a little bit easier on the back end. Now, as I'm waiting for the sun to develop, I am starting to just see that it peaked out from the clouds. We're getting this direct light. You're probably maybe getting a little bit more harsh shadows on me. That's actually gonna work really well for this next shot. I want to see if I can walk kind of underneath this tree and just get a little bit of a different type of shot that I can cut into other frames of this beautiful area that just shows these details. And anytime that you have a beautiful backlit tree, a backlit leaf or backlit flower or plant, it just creates a little bit more drama than something that's front lit. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start in the position that we were before. I'm still gonna pan up to the tree here and I'm going to move and I'm gonna sort of like tilt but I'm just gonna do this motion kind of left and right as I walk forward and backwards. And it's creating this really dynamic motion, but what's really kind of making this cool is the sun peeking in and out of the tree and all these leaves. And it just gives me a very different type of scene. That's all we need right there. We're working a scene a little bit, sort of like what we do with the still image, but we're doing it with the intention of these little short, little three to five second cut, 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 cut. That's what creates this dynamic ability to tell a story in a way that's frankly not boring. So what we didn't talk about yet is how we actually piece them together. Now, typically it's just a hard cut, but if we want to elevate our game just a little bit more, we can start talking about how you transition from one shot into another shot. A hard cut is basically no transition at all. It's just you're looking at one thing, now you're looking at another. And honestly, most of the time, that's all you need. But when I saw this tree, as I was walking around this tree, it gave me this really interesting idea. 
So what we can capture is what's called a wipe transition, but it's just this kind of black bar that kind of wipes one video to the other. If we want to get a little bit more creative, I can use this tree as a natural wipe. Here's how I can do it. I can frame up the shot. I'm going to keep my 1x here. Now one last thing I should mention that is going to come up when we do this is that autofocus is going to become a little bit of an issue. Basically, the iPhone is going to try and focus on whatever is closest in the frame. The second I move in front of this tree, instantly the iPhone is going to try and focus on whatever is closest in the frame, in this case the tree. Clearly, I don't want that. So here's all I have to do. With that first shot lined up, I'm just going to tap and hold. That will lock the focus and exposure on the top of the church. And then hit the record button and slowly transition to the other side. And I can use that as a natural wipe or a natural transition to introduce that next clip. It just makes it very simple, a little bit more fun, a little bit more engaging. It just gives us another way to sprinkle a little bit more energy into our final edit. So simple to do, definitely worth trying. So let me show you one transition that comes in really handy. I call this the palm transition. And bam, here I am in an entirely new location. How cool is that? It's so simple, it's so easy to do. Something you can easily introduce into your next video. Okay, so here I really am inside of an entirely new location. Not too far away, we're only maybe 100 feet away. Now I just wanna show you what this plaza looks like, right? It's just kinda of cool, but really kinda of boring. So it's somewhat interesting, but honestly, like what can I do with this scene, right? If I frame this up and I hit the record button, even at 0.5, it's not a bad composition, like maybe as a still image. But from a video perspective, not much is going on here. I'm looking for color, I'm looking for vibrancy, and most importantly when it comes to video, if I wanna create energy, I wanna create some motion, I wanna create like a dynamic scene, I need something in my foreground to show that motion. I don't have anything in my foreground, that's why this isn't working. As I get closer and closer to a subject, it's gonna be harder and harder for me to get a smooth shot without introducing some other fancy equipment. So what I'm gonna do to mask that motion that I'm gonna have is record the video in slow-mo. By slowing it down, what it's doing is slowing my motion down, really just kind of helping me out look as smooth, steady, and cinematic as possible. So what I want to do is open up my camera app, make sure I'm on slow-mo. Now I really like this type of shot because what it's doing is telling you where is in focus. And most importantly, it's telling the viewer where to look. The viewer is only going to look at whatever's in focus. And just as importantly, they're not gonna look at what's not in focus. So we call this selective focus, and it's a really powerful creative tool, either when we're shooting stills or video, but in video, it becomes a really dynamic shot if we can play with focus over time. Now, traditionally, this has actually been very difficult to do, but the iPhone just makes it so simple. So we're in slow motion mode. I have 2.5X already lined up. I'm just gonna try and create a composition that's a little bit more interesting. So I'm gonna try and keep that as minimal as possible in the bottom of the frame. Now I like this composition. I'm gonna hit the record button and all I'm gonna do is tap on that background and then tap right back on that flower and then stop. It's actually a very basic and simple move. We can do that literally with a tap of our finger and using that along with slow motion to smooth that focus pulling out, we get a really cool shot that you may not have thought of before. All these little tips and techniques that we're showing you, they're just sort of tools that you have in your toolkit now that may not have occurred to you before. I absolutely encourage you to take these out, to try them out, to explore them on your own and I'm absolutely sure that if you do, you're gonna walk away with much better footage, much more cinematic shots, and ultimately footage that you can't wait to share with your friends and family. This video was a free preview of my Capture It All online course. In this course, you'll discover how to use your iPhone to literally capture everything that's happening around you. We'll talk about composition, 
storytelling, timing, photographing people, recording videos, time lapses, flying a drone, and so much more. If you'd like to use your iPhone to its fullest potential, please take a look at the full version of Capture It All. You'll find the link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link right now and I'll see you inside the full version of the course.